Hello YouTube, welcome to this video. Uh, this video is in relation to the 5900X where I'm going to run through some benchmarks and a small bit of gaming um, with the intention of showing some values in relation to temperatures. So this is not you know, generally looking at the highest scores I can get or trying to beat those scores. This is looking at the temperatures through a number of benchmarks that the Ryzen 5900 that I'm using based on my settings to give you a comparison you know, with your own processor to see if um, you're getting similar temperatures, be it or, or even lower or higher. Uh, all the tools that I'm using are uh, free to download, at least trial versions, so you can test them yourself. And the game I'm using is uh, free to play. So in relation to the tools for benchmarking, and you know, I'll have a number of, of uh, applications up that will display temperatures, max and min, um, throughout these uh, benchmarks. So I'll be using the Cinebench R23, the Cinebench R20, uh, CPU Mark, and the A64 Extreme. Uh, for the gaming uh, benchmark, uh, I'm going to use Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And the main reason I'm using this is of all the games I've played uh, with this CPU, the one that gives the highest temperatures and higher than even some of these benchmarks, which, are, which you're going to see um, as you watch through this video, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And it'll be also interesting to see if, if you're getting similar results you know, with that game compared to your benchmarks. You know, please let me know in the comments below because um, it's something I've, I've wondered about as well. So listen, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you find you know, what the, the, the benchmarks coming up useful. And as I said, the main reason here is to give you an idea of temperatures so you have some baseline or some comparison for your own 5900X. Okay, before I get started on the benchmarks, I just want to give a quick overview of the BIOS settings I'm using. The uh, motherboard I have is the ROG Strix X570E, and this is just show the how I have Precision Boost Overdrive set up. So within AMD overclocking here, uh, if I go into Precision Boost Overdrive, you can see I have that set to advanced. Um, everything pretty much turned on auto, but with the curve op optimizer, I'm going on a, a negative curve, all cores with a value of 20. Okay, the first test we're going to run is the Cinebench R23. Um, just again, to get an idea of temperatures in relation to multi-core and single-core performance. So the first test within the Cinebench R23 is the multi-core. Um, I'm going to display on screen here um, you know, some information that will be handy for you to uh, get a gauge of how the temperatures are, are, are showing for the... Um, the Ryzen 9 5900X that we're using here. So up here on the top left, I have the output from um, the uh, NZXT CAM software. For my cooling on the processor, I'm using the Kraken X63, the 280mm version. Um, so that's the output. You're showing clock speed, CPU temp, GPU temp, and CPU, or GPU load. Uh, we'll be up here on top left. Then I have the HW monitor. Uh, so within here, we can see the current value, the max and min through the test. So this will kind of give you an idea of the max value as, as the, you know, because we're going to edit and cut some of this. But by the time you get to the end, you'll see the max value. I also have up here is the HW info 64. So again, this will give you some more um, temperature stats in relation to obviously the package itself. All these should be pretty similar across the board. We have the CPU die and the CCD1 to CCD2. Uh, for all the tests I'm going to run here, I'll have these um, these windows open uh, at the start of the test and at the end of the test, um, so you can p compare and get values. Um, right, the other thing I wanted to just quickly show you before we start is the fan curve I'm using for the X63 um, all-in-one uh, liquid cooler. So looking at the ROG um, fan profiles, uh, just to give you an idea here, um, up to about 60 Celsius, we're at 50%, and then it starts shooting up to get where it'll eventually max out at 74 degrees. Now, just to be fair, be aware, the ROG uh, fan software reports the CPU temperature a little lower. So, for example, in all these other uh, monitoring tools here, we have 51, 52 degrees, and down here, I have, well, down to 40 here at the moment on the... Um, on the reporting from the ROG software. So that's why I have it at 74. So probably won't actually kick into about 80 degrees before it gets to the 100%. Just something to be aware of. So that's the kind of fan curve I'm using. Right, I'd say the ambient temperature for all these tests is a pretty warm day outside. Um, I just have a small window open here to my, uh, my right hand side, but it's about 23 degrees, 23, 24 degrees in this room, quite warm. Okay, so let's kick off the first test. Um, I'll keep the camera rolling, or the keep yeah, keep the camera rolling here for the first minute, just to give you kind of an idea of what we're looking at. So we're going to run the multi-core test first at a ten-minute run. Okay, let's kick it off. Uh, 
Okay, that's kicking off here. We should see the temperature start to shoot up. So we're up to 68 degrees. I said it was a pretty warm day. I have no fans in the background uh, outside of the PC case and a very small uh, crack in the window open. <coughs> so at about 24 degrees here in the room. Um, so we seem to be averaging at the moment around the 64, 65 degrees. Um, again, we can see through our different stat windows here, the different uh, temps. We can see the clock speeds are running at about 4.4, I would say. Um, different, I found with different tests, those can range between the kind of 4.4 up to the kind of the 4.6 all core. As you said, this is running with um, the P with um, AMD Precision Overdrive uh, enabled, uh, PBO limits enabled, and a negative fan curve on all cores of uh, 20. Um, so basically what that means is the temperatures stay roughly the same as it was in stock, but increase the performance slightly. And, and, and those settings we, we showed earlier on. Okay, so we're almost up here on the, um, or we're just going over the first minute. And as we can see here, we're averaging about 66 and we've hit a max so far. I was at the very start uh, at 69, just waiting for the fans to catch up. So I'll stop the video here and um, I'll cut and we'll, we'll recontinue it for the last minute. Okay, just back here for the last uh, minute of the test. Um, looking at the thermostat here in the room, it's actually about 25 degrees, so definitely warm in here. Um, and it was at, at the start as well, I just, I just uh, didn't check it right. So 25 degrees here in the room. We can see we hit a max temperature of 73, uh, currently running at 69 here for the last few seconds. I've seen the temperature generally fluctuate between 67 and 71 with the odd spike around, well, as we see here, 73. So this is coming to the end of our 10 minute run. We'll let it run down um, over on the HW Info 64 uh, table. We can see the CPU die, the CCD1, the CCD2. So our maximum across them, the highest we had was 81 degrees on the CCD1 um, and the current value of 69. So, so we had a peak there of 81. Um, so six seconds left here. We'll see what score we get. Um, I expect it to be a little lower than usual just because of the amount of stuff I've opened in the background here. Um, let this last frame run out. Still 73 degrees max. Uh, room temperature about, you know, 25 degrees. It's, it's definitely warm in here. Um, and not just from the computer. It's, it's, it's warm outside. And this is a, a log cabin type structure. So it's, it keeps in the heat. Okay, let's see how we do here. So we're currently running at 69 degrees. And let's see what the 5900X gets us here. So 2436 is our final score. Um, you know, when running this cooler and nothing else running in the background, you can get up to about the 2-2 mark easy enough. But again, it's just more to give you an idea of temperatures. So now we'll move on to the uh, next test. Okay, next up, I want to give you a quick look at the single core performance in terms of temperatures. This is the only test where I'm going to run single core performance um, because I find them you know, pretty much the same across the board. So this will give you a gauge of the temperatures are reaching just using single core within the Cinebench R23 benchmark. So let's just kick it off here and see what happens. Okay. Okay, uh, now we're a little over five minutes into the run. And again, just to give you... Uh, a quick update on the temperatures before I kill here the single core uh, uh, test. So we've remained pretty consistent between the temperatures between the 71 and 73 degrees. Um, and it'll remain that throughout. I've done run this test before. It'll remain at those temperatures throughout the 10 minute run. Uh, we've hit the max here of 75. Again, usually if it's a cooler day, I, I expect it under the, you know, the high 60s, uh, around the 69, um, 68, 69 uh, temperature range. But warmer day, this is the temperatures we're getting on the single core uh, test with the Cinebench R23. Okay, now we're going to move on to the um, next test um, where we will again look at multi-core um, testing and the temperatures across those tests. Okay, YouTube, next up we're going to run the uh, CPU mark benchmark. Um, again, to get an idea of temperatures. Um, I've also turned up here the extra window just of the CAM software showing the liquid temperature. Again, this just relates to the uh, warm temperature we have here in the room. So that, that the liquid temperature is at 38 degrees, which is a little higher than normal. Um, as I said, we're at, we're at you know, as I've repeated a number of times, about 25, a little higher, I'd say, degrees here in this room. So this is just to give an example of a more um, extreme scenario where we're testing the, um, 
the temperatures of this CPU. So let's just kick off the CPU mark and see what we get or what these temperatures look like. I have also reset the values here in these windows so that we get a better gauge of how these individual tests are affecting uh, the results. Okay, so let me rerun this for the CPU mark. Okay, this shouldn't take too long this time. So um, I'll quickly uh, cut to the end if it's taking too long, but um, I'll keep all the windows open so that you know, we see the temperatures we're getting. And hopefully it's something you're able to compare against with your skew of the 5900X and to get an idea again of, of the temperatures I'm seeing. Um, so hopefully this is, this is of use. Okay, so we're hitting the max of 71 degrees, which we're currently at at the moment. Um, we can see our kind of CPU here broken down between the CCD1 and CCD2 and the die itself. As these tests come through, um, we can see it now spiking up to 80 degrees. Uh, current temperature is at about 75 degrees. Okay, just coming to the end here of the test, uh, we see that the spike of temperature is set at about the 80 degrees, and we're currently running at between you know, 70, 73, 74 degrees. So this uh, CPU mark test will be over any second now. We'll get our score. Um, we can see the temperatures climbing back up again here a small bit, 79 degrees. Okay. So we ended up with a score of about uh, 4195 um, on a normal day, as I said, with nothing else running in the background, we get to about 40, high 41. Um, okay, so that's the temperatures all coming back down. So okay, let's move on to the next test. Okay, YouTube, next up we have the uh, 8064 Extreme uh, System Stability Test. This is the last of these benchmarking tests I'll be running. Now we're pretty much running in one after another here, um, so it'll give you a gauge of you know how these temperatures run after the system being stressed for a while. Okay, so we're going to let this run for about uh, ten minutes. I'll let it run at the start, which I'll do right now. So we're we've ticked here the stress CPU and the stress FPU. Um, so this is the system stability test. So let's kick it off. Look at our temperatures and see how we're doing. Our liquid temperature of our cooler is still at the uh, thirty-eight degrees. Current temperature is 54 degrees Celsius on the uh, CPU package. Okay. Let's start and have a look. Okay, CPU usage straight up to 100%. And temperatures we are hitting up to about 71 degrees here at the moment. Running clocks are at about, we can see it here, the, the variation, but about the four let's say 4.2, 4 4.3, um, it's, it's fluctuating a lot, but I'll leave the stats up here so you can have a look. And let me just get this down a small bit so you can have a, a better look. Okay, we'll let this run here for a minute and see what we look like. Okay, we just skipped ahead of here a little bit and we are coming up to 10 minutes running the ADA64 Extreme uh, benchmark test. Uh, having a quick look at our temperatures, see we're currently running at about 71 and with the max is 73. So you can have a look at, if you want to pause the video again, uh, with almost 10 minutes into the run, and these are our temperatures, wattages, clock speeds um, reported from HW Monitor. And over here then from the HW Info, we have you know a more thorough breakdown of the temperatures and um, the individual aspects of the CPU itself. So again, this is something you can compare to yourself with your own tests. Uh, our temperature on the liquid is up to 39 degrees, getting a little toasty. Um, and over here then we see the graph, so the, the CPU has been kind of constantly running at 100%. And we see here, the now the temperature reported by the ADA64 is obviously the same place that the ROG fan curve software is getting it from. Because if I bring back over this window, we can see here, the report here is 60 degrees. That's a 60 degrees Celsius um, that we see here. Um, I'm not sure which is right, but listen, I've, I've showed... Um, you know stats here from multiple sources um so you can kind of decide for yourself but i but i you know i'd be using pretty much the the hw monitor and the hw info as our guide uh for temperatures and that's generally um if, if they're getting high then then you know these these are the temperatures I, I would be more concerned about um but yeah this is just to give you a view from you know all the sources i'm using to get my temperatures from okay i'm going to stop this here now but um you know i've let this run for 15 minutes before that's kind of the longest i'll let it run for and uh, nothing really changes from around this point uh these values again warm day but these values are will, will remain consistent across this test okay let's uh, move on now to the um uh, next test Okay, YouTube, the last test we're going to run here is in relation to gaming. Um, so generally when I game, be it, you know, 
modern titles, third party shooters, uh, RPGs. You know, temperatures range between the kind of 60 and 70 degrees generally. Um, but the one game I found that actually shows higher temperatures nearly than any of the benchmarks uh, when gaming is none other than Call of Duty Warzone. So I'm going to let, you know, leave these open in the background to get the kind of the maxes that we're going to see while we're playing this game. But um, as far as temperature goes, the one game that, you know, will truly spike it that I found so far is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, or sorry, Call of Duty uh, Warzone. Um, so let's hit play here. And let's just play a minute of a, a war zone map and see what kind of numbers we're getting back. So we'll let this load up here. So as you see already in the menus, we're hitting 79 degrees on the CPU. Um, so generally I find playing this at kind of normal temperatures on a normal evening will max at about 82 and be around 78, 77, 76, around those, those, those values as the game. Uh, plays okay so we're hitting 80 already right let's just bring up the game here okay back to desktop here and looking at the values um let's see the max we hit while playing call of duty here just for the 10 minutes is 82 degrees and generally that's the max i've seen while um playing it um so again this will just give you some of the uh scores uh from the max and min values in the background while call of duty was running for about 10 minutes but you know as you can see and if you compare it to some of the other tests we've done um you know it's it's as high if not higher than any of those benchmarks uh current liquid temperature is sitting at 40 degrees celsius um it's, that's pretty much going to comp conclude the video here um you know i know there's a number of other tests and other games i could do but you know these are just four or five pints in terms of a reference for temperatures i showed you the bias settings i have at the start how this is set up um you know explain the ambient temperature uh, ambient temperature i have here in the room uh the air cooler i'm using on the i'm oh, sorry the the liquid cooler i'm using on the um the processor and um you know just to give you an idea of what what those temperatures look like so the case i'm using just so you know for this uh testing is the nzxt h710 i have three fans in the front one exhaust and uh, two more exhausts with a um, pull configuration on my uh, AIO, which is uh, top mounted uh, on the computer. Listen, I hope this has been of some help. I hope you can compare some of these values. I know a lot of the tech is going to be a little small. You'll probably have to look at this on, on a bigger screen. But, you know, pause and have a look at those values. Uh, compare it to your own, um, your own uh, 5900X. Um, you know, I find that these processors run generally a little hotter. Um, you know, I've also used the 5800X um i found actually that run a lot cooler while playing call of duty um, but i think that the single core um sometimes with the 5900x it can reach um those higher temperatures uh, so listen i hope it's helpful i hope you've, you've enjoyed watching um you know if you can please subscribe and you know best of luck with your new cpu your overclocking uh, ventures and you know gaming in general hopefully we can buy those modern gpus sometime soon thanks again